So now that you know how to use one of these pipette aids or pipette guns, I'll show you how to properly work with a flask of cells um, inside a biosafety cabinet such as this. Now, the first thing you should note is the organization of how I've set up my workspace. Okay, I've got my um, pipettes on the left here. I've got my pipette gun on the right. Um, my cells that I'm working with here. And basically, I've got a the, the space in front of me nice and clear. So you want to be nicely organized and have um, the solutions you want to use, your tips sort of around you within arm's reach, but not cluttered in the middle here, because this is where you'll be working and, and you want to keep this as clean as possible. Okay, so be, be organized when you're in here and that will minimize um, the chance of any contamination in your actual cell culture. So your cells will come in a this is what's called a tissue culture flask um, and the, depending on the cells you're working with in, in your in our prac class we'll be working on adherent cells so what that means is those cells will be growing on a plastic surface and they'll be growing on this surface here um, of this uh, of this flask on this plastic surface of this flask on the bottom here so when when you've got your cells in here you want to have them face a uh, uh, laying down horizontally like this so the media stays um, covered um, so your cells stay covered in media okay so what you don't want to do is have it standing up for any prolonged period of time because your cells there are not um, being covered by media so they'll eventually dry out and die okay the other thing to notice is that this tissue culture flask is asymmetric okay and what i mean by this can you see the neck here is angled up this is the bottom of the flask and this is the top Okay, so you want to make sure you have your cell sitting with the bottom down and not the opposite way, like that. That's incorrect. Um, y y the flask isn't designed to be like that. Um, and again, your cells which are stuck here at the bottom will eventually dry and die if you have it positioned like this for any prolonged period of time. So your cells, when they're sitting in the hood, should be... Should be um, uh, position like so. Now when you're ready to take the media out and to wash them with PBS or to put trypsin or whatever it is that you're trying to do, that's when you stand the flask up right like this and you remove the cap. Okay, so say we want to take the media out of this um, out of this flask and wash it with say a saline solution which I've got in this tube here. So what you do is you take the caps off the tubes that you want to transfer liquids in and out of. You can put the caps face down onto the work surface here, okay? So remember this work surface is nice clean, nice and clean and sterile. It's been UV irradiated. You've sprayed it with 70% ethanol, so it's nice and clean. So actually it's perfectly fine to put the surface, the, 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 these caps face down. Um, it's preferable to do that rather than face up, which you might be used to if you've come from a microbiology lab, they always tell you to put your um, caps face up. But in, an, in a cell culture lab like this, all you're doing by putting these things face up is you're, um, you're allowing the potential to drop um, unwanted liquids or for different particles and pathogens to fall into that lid. And then if you then cover that back onto your solution or cover this back onto your cells. You're just transferring that contaminant into your cells. So the best practice is to have it face down on a nice clean work surface like that. Okay. So to remove um, the media from that flask, you get one of these serological pipettes and your pipette aid. Okay. You angle the flask so you can then draw out that liquid. Okay, and then you can put it into a liquid waste container. And you can do that a couple of times like that till you get rid of all the liquid. Okay, don't avoid the temptation to uh, take up the liquid in one go, because as I said, you want to avoid drawing the liquid all the way up into the, the top of this uh, pipette aid, into the top of this pipette aid. So it's preferable to um, have a couple of goes at it to, to get rid of all the, the media that's in that flask. Okay. And then let's say we want to transfer some saline solution into that flask to wash the cells. So we take, say, let's say five mils um, 
um, of saline solution, put it into the flask, and then we dispense. Okay, these serological pipettes are designed to be um, single use. So every time when you finish with that, you want to discard that and just get a new one to prevent cross contamination um, between your different uh, tubes. Okay, so once you're done, cap that. You cap that and you want to lay that down and basically say this is a saline solution. You can wash your cells there by rocking that back and forth gently. Okay, and then to remove that saline solution, you would stand it back up again. Get here and you transfer pipette, oh, sorry, a serological pipette, and we remove that, remove that saline solution. And then let's say I get another pipette. And here we're taking out some fresh media, for example. Let's say we want to put 10 mils in. This is a five mil uh, serological pipette. You can see I've taken it up to five. Um, transfer that in, and then you get another lot of five to make 10 mils. Okay. Discard that, put the cap on, and there we've managed to remove the old media, wash the cells with a saline solution, and replace it with fresh media. Okay, so that's how you um, would uh, transfer liquids in and out of one of these tissue culture flasks um, 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 uh, in a biosafety cabinet such as this.